Hi everybody and welcome back to Shear and Moma Diagrams by Equation. This is part two. Part one, if you haven't watched it yet, just covered sort of the basic idea of shear and moment diagrams, as well as doing the statics for the problem that we're looking to solve here so that part two, you can always come back to and it's purely just writing the equations to find the shear and moment diagram for our given beam. And as we can see our beam here, we do have a uh, beam that has a uniform load in the first five feet, uh, no load between five feet and 10 feet, and then an applied moment and then again, no load until you get to the roller at B where you would then have the reaction BY, which has already been solved for. And again, we have the resultant shown on the free body diagram of the 500 pounds, which would just be 100 pounds per lineal foot times five feet, and that resultant's acting in the centroid, so it is two and a half feet from A. So if we're gonna find the equations we talked about in part one that we're always looking for those discontinuities. And so it's really important that even though we know the resultant of that uniform load, the resultant is not what we're gonna base the shear and moment diagrams off of. We have to have to have to base it off of the actual uniform load, because remember from part one, the shear and moment diagram of uniform load looks really different than the shear and moment diagram of a point load. So if we wanted to look at where we'd have discontinuities, we start at AY, and then suddenly we have this constant load of 100 pounds per lineal foot, but then that actually stops at five feet, and we go to zero load. So we have our first discontinuity there, then between 100 feet and 1,500 feet, or our 1,500 foot pounds, and between our 100 pounds per lineal foot at five feet, so between five and 10 feet, again, we have zero load, and then suddenly that changes with the application of the moment, and then finally between 10 and 15 feet, we have zero load, and that changes until by. So basically, we can just make cuts between the three discontinuities in our load, and that's what we want to do. So anywhere you see a discontinuity, make a cut. That's the best way, before and after. So we're going to just now draw the free body diagram of cut one, and this free body diagram is only going to be valid from x equal to zero to five feet. But we definitely, definitely want to include that x equal to zero in our beam. So we have our uniform load. We're going to draw the internal reactions of shear moment and normal and immediately indicate that normal is going to be zero. And those are all drawn in the positive direction for the right end of a beam. And we have our resultant of our uniform load, which is the 100 pounds per lineal foot. Now this is important. Even though we know that 100 pounds per lineal foot acts over the full five feet, We've made a cut before we've hit five feet. We've just gone some distance x, where x can equal anything between zero and five, including zero and five. So when we draw our free body diagram, the distance that we're gonna label on our FBD is just x. We're just labeling this x. We don't know if we've gone one foot, two foot, whatever. So that means that our resultant, when we've only gone a distance x, is not our 500 pounds, the resultant is 100 pounds per lineal foot times x. And that resultant still acts at the centroid of the shape on our new cut one free body diagram, so that's gonna act at x over two from the cut end. So now we can do a little bit of statics. If we sum our forces in the y, we're gonna have our 371 pounds up, our negative 100 pounds per lineal foot times x going down, and then we also have our negative V1, and so we're going to end up now with our shear as a function of X as 317 pounds minus our 100 pounds per lineal foot times X. Now we can sum moments, and I recommend summing moments at the cut equal to zero. And the reason I say at the cut is basically you're going to find later, perhaps in uh, strength of materials, that you sometimes don't need the shear equation, but you definitely just want the moment expression. And so if you sum moments at the cut, the shear equation can remain unknown because it would drop out of the moment expression. And for this one, I'm gonna go ahead and assume counterclockwise is positive because again, it just doesn't matter as long as you're not adding clockwise and counterclockwise to each other when we're doing statics. It doesn't matter what you call positive or negative when you're doing statics, just be consistent. So. 
we would have our negative 317 pounds times just a distance x plus the 100 pounds per lineal foot times x to get the resultant times the moment arm x over 2 and then finally just the moment at 1. So the moment for 0 to 5 feet would be 317 pounds times x minus 50 pounds per lineal foot times x squared. And so we can see already that that's going to be parabolic, which looked like part 1 when we had a uniform load. We had a parabolic curvature for our moment. All right, so now we'll jump straight to cut 2. And that's going to be valid just from 5 feet to, whoops, 10 feet. But even though it's only valid from 5 feet to 10 feet, we definitely, definitely still draw our free body diagram of our section starting at A. And the reason we want to do that is those internal shear and moment that we have at our cut face, they are going to be affected by everything that's happening in the beam. So as we label those V1 and V2, remember those are affected by everything that happens um, from the support over. So you always have to start at an end. We could have started at B for all of our cuts, but what you really want to make sure you do is have all of your cuts start from the same end just for bookkeeping. Otherwise it gets a little bit harder. And so now for this section we do have the uniform load over the entire five foot that it acts over and so the distance from the edge of that to the cut would be x minus five feet. So we can put our resultant in and that would be our hundred pounds per lineal foot times five feet. That still acts two and a half feet then from A. So the distance to the cut would be x minus two and a half feet. And I really recommend you take the time to always figure out where that resultant at and then label the dimensions just like I label it here because I can guarantee you, for many of you, if you do not, you will spend 15, 20 minutes staring at it trying to figure out that right distance. But you can see the way we've set this up if I know it's two and a half feet from A and I know the total length is X, then I know the distance to the cut would be X minus two and a half feet. All right, so let's just sum some forces in the Y equal to zero. We can call up positive and we would have our negative 500 pounds plus our 317 pounds minus our shear for cut two. And we're going to get our shear as a constant 183 pounds. Now, when we sum our moments at the cut equal to zero, I'm going to go clockwise positive this time just again to show you it doesn't matter. We'd have our 317 times x. Now our 500 pounds, that resultant, times that x minus 2.5 we found out. And then, of course, minus the applied moment at the cut. And so we get the applied moment of the cut. We can see our equation. There's a constant minus 183 times x. So as we look at that equation, we see when we don't have a uniform load that our moment expression is not parabolic, but rather it's linear in x. All right, so let's jump down to cut three. Cut three is going to be valid from 10 to 15 feet, but again, the free body diagram still starts at A. It's just the equations are only valid from 10 to 15 feet. We're going to draw our internal reactions, our shear, our moment, and of course we know the normal will be zero. We can put on our loads, same resultant as we had from cut two. Really the only difference is we now have this moment of 1,500 foot-pounds that's been applied, and so that will affect our equation, but all our distances turn out, we're still x minus two and a half to get us to the cut. So when we sum forces in the y, we haven't added anything that changes that expression, so we're still gonna get that our shear is just equal to a constant of 183 pounds, so that's a flat constant. But then when we do our summation of moments at the cut, and I'll go ahead and do this clockwise again so we can see how much it matches cut two, we're still gonna have our 317 pounds times the distance x minus that resultant from the uniform load times x minus two and a half, its distance to the cut. But then we're gonna have to add in that moment. Remember that moment doesn't have a moment arm, it's just a constant, and then minus the moment at the cut. Because again, no moment arm, so even the moment at the cut has to be included. And so now we have our three equations 
for shear and our three equations for moment. And again, we can see the moment is linear in x in the section from 10 to 15 feet. So now what we want to do is get ready to plot. So we're going to set a few things up on the screen here. All right, so what I've done is gone ahead and created initial plots for the shear and the moment diagram. So I just have the horizontal line that will represent from 0 to L, and I've lined it up right under the free body diagram so that it's easy to see where things align, and even brought down the 5 foot, 10 foot, and 15 foot locations on the beam, marked my shear and moment, I put units, really important, and of course said that we're positive or negative numbers given that above and below the horizontal line, and then also gone ahead and created a table for putting in my different x values uh, to get back out the shear of the moment within each cut. So if we wanted to look at the first cut, which is from x equal to 0 to 5, I just picked what appeared to be logical values and put it in x equal to 0, x equal to 2.5, and, and x equal to 5. Uh, could have used any numbers between 0 and 5. And out of the equations for shear, you can see I got 317, 64, and negative 183. And for moment, we got 0 at x, which makes sense. It's a pin. 480, and then it drops to 335. When I then move to my second set of equations for cut 2, I can put in any x value between 5 and 10, and equal to 5 and 10. So I used 5, 7.5, and, and 10. And of course, the shear is going to be constant for all those values at negative 183. But then you can see I'm decreasing my moment as I increase my x value. Check it out and notice that at x equal to 5 feet, the shear is the same from both equations and the moment is the same from both equations. And since there's not an applied point load or an applied moment at that location, we wouldn't expect a jump. So that makes sense. They should match, and that's a great sort of reality check. Now we can look at what happens for the last cut from 10 to 15 feet. And so for our three values of 10 to 12 and a half and 15, again, a constant shear. And then we can see our moment, and our moment's decreasing from 920 down to approximately zero. And I say that's approximately zero even though we got five out of the equation simply due to round off error. And it's not a surprise because in reality, AY when we did the statics would have come out to be 316.666 and BY was actually 183.333. So the big thing is that that five is less than 1% of the maximum moment that we're getting. And so that's round off error, no big deal. Now, whoops, what we want to do is pay attention, though, to what happens to the moment at x equal to 10 feet. From M2, it's negative 580, but from equation M3, it's positive 920, which turns out to be a jump of 1,500 feet, which is exactly what we would expect because there's an applied moment. So now we can move right into plotting. And if we look at our shear diagram, we can actually plot and connect our first three points, our 317, our 64, and our minus 183. And then we know we just stay constant, so we can mark that. And so now we have our shear diagram. And we see we have a maximum shear of 317 pounds. We don't really need to write the units because it's on our diagram. But we also want to point out, we had noticed in the first video, part one, that we always had a max moment wherever shear crossed zero. So we should go ahead and figure out what that length of x is where the shear crosses zero. And if you go right back to v1 expression, let's just set that equal to zero and solve for x. So that would just be 317 pounds divided by 100 pounds per lineal foot. So we're crossing zero at 307, 3.17 feet. So that's going to be useful to us. So as we now go on and plot our 480 M1 and our 335 M2, we can see somewhere between those is our max. So if we solve M1 with x equal to 317, we get 502, and we can now connect that and get a nice curve. Then we can plot M2 and our 335, our negative 122.5, and our negative 580. Those are linear. Then we jump to 920 there at 10 feet and that is a jump of 1500 just like our applied moment 
And then we can plot our last points of our 902, our 408, and basically zero, connect those which are linear, and we now have our moment diagram, and we can see we have a max moment of 920 foot pounds or pound feet. So hopefully you've got some experience now on how to cut sections. Remember, you're always cutting between discontinuities in the load, and then you're just writing equations from simple statics in terms of x. So have fun writing moment expressions with equations. Thanks for watching.